So good morning again. I am Lori Hunter from the University of Colorado at Boulder, um, and I'll be chairing this session. The three speakers have promised to try to keep it to 15 minutes so that we'll have some time for discussion before we go for lunch. Um, please then write down questions and comments you have, and we'll have some public talk afterwards. So um, I wanted to start off just saying a couple of words. It's, well, it's absolutely thrilling for me as a demographer to have a day dedicated to this topic here at the IHDP meetings. Um, we heard a couple of folks this morning talk about the ways in which the environmental research community needs social scientists. And I mean, that's, that's music to my ears, absolutely. But I also wanted to say that it's important that as social scientists, we encourage our colleagues to consider the environmental dimensions. And there's myself and several other social demographers, many of whom are in this room, have been kind of carrying the environmental torch among our dem demographic colleagues for years um, and trying to get demographers to think about the environmental context. It doesn't always work, and I wanted to give you a quick little example. Just last Thursday, I went to a research presentation by a delightful colleague of mine. I'm from Boulder. Um, she's interested in migration as a factor shaping the spread of the HIV AIDS pandemic in Kenya, a hugely important social demographic and public health topic. And she, as she went off to do her research, she found out that the explanatory factor underlying the spread of the HIV AIDS pandemic was environmental change. And it was all about Lake Victoria. And it was about pollution, it was about water hyacinths, and it was about the environment shaping migration patterns because fishermen had to leave. Fishermen le left, took their fish to other beaches, developed other kinds of sexual relationships, social structures changed. It's a, a place an amazing transition. And it's because of this environmental change, a question she hadn't even asked when she started that project. So one example that we have a lot of work to do even among the demographic community to convince folks to think about environmental issues. Um, I wanted to remind you that these plenaries are meant to stimulate discussion along the lines of the theme for the day, to give us ideas and kind of a common foundation from which we can take this knowledge to the parallel sessions that will go on today. So as you're listening to these three presentations, think about that, right? This is our common ground on which we're all approaching the rest of the day and it'll give us that common uh, foundation from which to explore additional topics. So I'll go ahead and get uh, started with the introduction of our first speaker, who's Wolfgang Lutz. He's the leader of the World Population Program at IASA, uh, which is the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis in Luxembourg, Austria. I guess the home of that was the second IHDP DP meeting way back when. Um, He's also director of the Vienna Institute of Demography at the Austrian Academy of Sciences and a professor of social and economic statistics at the Vienna University of Economics and Business. Three jobs, it looks like. Between 1998 and 2001, he served as the Secretary General for the IUSSP, the International Union for the Scientific Study of Population. His main interests are in forecasting family demography and population environment analyses. He's written or edited 22 books and more than 180 scientific articles with contributions to science, nature, and leading population journals. A PhD in demography from the University of Pennsylvania, a second from Vienna, and he recently won the European Research Council's Advanced Investigator Grant for a new study on forecasting society's adaptive capacities to climate change. And I think that's what we'll hear a bit about today. So, Wolfgang. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Again, this is my fourth open meeting. I was at Shonan Village, Rio, and uh, of course at Yaza, where you see the castle, Luxembourg Castle here. Population, some uh, people say, is often the, the elephant in the room, something that is clearly very important, but people don't know how to address it. And what I will try to do uh, in this short presentation is to address it very explicitly. Now, human actions are really the main topic of the all of the agenda of this conference, and in particular of this first day, uh, we want to look at the, the humans, not in a sort of an abstract entity and conceptualizing it one way or the other, but we really want to look at the human beings, the people 
who are the agents of change, and we want to focus on their capabilities as well as their vulnerabilities, because this is what we all worry about in the end. So first, uh, we'll uh, talk about the, the numbers, uh, human numbers on this earth, uh, explaining a bit this notion of the end of world population growth. This was the title of an article we published in Nature in 2002, and which has caused a lot of discussion. And what are the uncertainties associated with these projections? Second, we will address the demographically divided world that we see today. We have the simultaneous presence of a concern about rapid population growth in Africa and other parts of the world, and at the same time, the concern about rapid aging as well as population shrinking in other parts of the world. And then we'll try to go beyond the sheer numbers. We broaden the focus to what I call the human capital, which is defined by education and also by health. And I will try to show that this is not just another sort of soft area, but we do actually have some quite hard numbers. We have mathematical models and actually can forecast some of these trends. And then at the end, I will talk about three different ways in which population matters for climate change mitigation and adaptation. Now, on the global population context, we all know that the 20th century has often been called the century of population growth, or some people put it more dramatically, of the population explosion with the world population increasing from 1.6 billion in 1900 to 6.1 billion in 2000. These are easy to remember numbers. The 21st century will be by future demographers called the century of population aging, I believe, with the proportion of the population above the age of 60, just to take one indicator of aging, increasing from currently 10% it's at the moment 10% of the entire world population are currently above the age of 60 to somewhere in between 25 and 45% by the end of the century. So this is the range of uncertainty that we have. Uh, the world as a whole is likely to see the end of world population growth during this century and we look at some numbers. And then uh, we really will reiterate on, on trying to find a common interpretation uh, of this demographically divided world, because some people tend to think there can only be one problem, either the population is growing too fast or it's aging too fast. But the world where both happens at the same time, and sometimes even in a country like China, you have very rapid aging together with still some growth, is something that confuses several people. Okay, here you see the very long-term trend. This is the world population roughly from the year 1000. Of course, you have only estimates for these earlier years. But it shows that up until around uh, 1700, the world population was clearly below half a billion people, 500 million, with some ups and downs throughout human history. And it was really only the 19th century that the world population started to increase uh, due to advances in, in agriculture and better food supply, some early sanitation measures, preventive medicine. And then in the 20th century, we saw this precipitous decline in death rates with birth rates continuing to be high. And then we see this increase uh, to 6.1 billion by 2000. At the moment, we have about 6.7 billion. And then these colorful lines to the year 2100 show you the fractiles of the uncertainty distribution as we calculated them. So you see there's a huge range going from below 6 in 2100 uh, to above 12, uh, with the median being somewhere close to 9 billion. So how do we forecast the population? Well, we first need the population in a given starting year uh, by age and sex. That's what demographers usually do. And there's a joke for demography. It says on a t-shirt, breaking down by age and sex. So that's what you do as a, if you become a demographer. Um, and we need to make assumptions on the three components of change. Fertility, which is a measure of the birth rates, mortality, which is a death rate, often described, also summarized by life expectancy at birth, and migration. Mostly we look at net migration, which is the net of in-migration and out-migration. 